All right, folks, welcome to a semester in economics. And what we're going to do in this very first lesson is we are going to define economics and try to get an understanding of what it is exactly this subject that we're learning. Okay, so you should have a notebook in front of you or some paper so that you can take notes. And I recommend that you write down everything that I write down up here on the board uh, in your notes so that you can study and uh, add a few extra notes of things that I say or maybe some things that will trigger memories while you're, uh, while you're learning this stuff. Okay, All right, so what is economics? Um, well, I have my own definition. There's probably several definitions out there. I'm sure there are plenty of textbooks that have definitions of economics. Well, there's one in particular that I like to work from, and I'm going to give you that definition right now. And after I give you that definition, so we're going to say economics. What is economics? All right. After I give you my definition, I'm going to break down the definition into four main pieces so that you can have a better understanding of how we're going to focus on learning this semester. Okay? So here's my definition of economics. To me, economics is the scientific study of how individuals that's, that's like people, right? Individual people. Organizations. Organizations. So that's like businesses or maybe government organizations or not-for-profit organizations. You know, you know uh, uh, groups of people who come together to either make a profit or, or achieve some kind of goal. Or, let's say, or societies. Now, a society is like an entire country or an entire city or an entire state, okay? Change that to a societies or societies deal with the problem of scarcity. Scarcity. Okay, that's S C A R C I. T Y scarcity. That word right there, scarcity, that is the main word in economics. That is the most important word in economics. If I were to give you a much simpler definition of economics, I would just simply say it is the study of scarcity. And I'm going to talk about scarcity in just a few minutes. So there are four main um, elements of this definition. The first thing I want to tell you is that economics itself is scientific, that it focuses on individuals, organizations, and societies. So that's its own one category. Economics has to do with how these, these groups or individuals, how they deal with. Now, the idea of dealing with is the idea of making a decision. When you want to deal with something, you know, when, when you get a flat tire, you have to deal with that flat tire. And what that means is to make decisions about how to handle that flat tire. So dealing with is the idea of decision making, having to make a decision. A decision about what? Well, a decision about the fact that you are facing the problem of scarcity. You as an individual are facing the problem of scarcity, or an organization is facing the problem of scarcity, or an entire society, a country, or a state, or a city is facing the problem of scarcity. And like I said, I'm going to define scarcity in just a little bit. Okay, so here are four, the four things we're going to focus on is economics as scientific, economics as focusing on individuals, organizations, and societies, economics as uh, dealing with decision making and economics as handling the problem of scarcity. So in order to do that, what I want you to do right now is I want you to, on your notes, on, in your paper, uh, I'm going to break up the board into four quadrants like this, four quadrants. And I think you should also break up your notes into four quadrants. And we're going to put each one of these subjects in each one of these quadrants. So economics is scientific. So we're going to talk about what that means. Economics is concerned with individuals and organizations 
or firms, and societies, whole large groups of, of, of individuals. Okay? That economics focuses on dealing with, deal with. What does it mean to deal with something? Okay? And then lastly, we have the problem of scarcity. The problem of scarcity. Okay? So we're going to take these one at a time in the order that they are in the definition. Okay? So uh, economics is scientific. All right, so economics is a science. There are scientific journals devoted to economics. Uh, there are uh, people, researchers, people who get paid lots of money. Uh, well, they probably don't get paid as much as they want to get paid, but nonetheless, there are people who get paid money just to do research on economics, research on the problem of scarcity, research on individuals, organizations, and societies and how they deal with the problem of scarcity. And because economics is scientific, there are certain things that go along with all science. And, those two, and two of those things that we're going to focus on, we're not going to do all of science, but the two main things I want you to understand is that in science, when we approach a subject in science, we have to make assumptions and we have to draw conclusions. We make assumptions and we draw conclusions. Now, I want to clarify something here, and that is this class is a principles of economics class. This is not some master's or PhD level class where we're going to dig very deep into the research of economics. What you're supposed to be learning in this class are the basic, foundational, fundamental principles of economics. And that's what I'm going to focus on. So here's what I'm going to do. When we talk about these assumptions and conclusions, especially the assumptions, I want you to understand that the assumptions that we're going to use in this economics class might not be the kinds of assumptions that would be used in a much higher level economics class. So if you decide that you're going to someday get a master's or a PhD in economics, you might find out something, you might learn something in that economics class and think back to this class and say, wow, uh, Professor Ryan was wrong. What you have to understand is that the assumptions that we're going to make are important when you're at the beginning stages of learning economics. Okay, so I'm warning you that what we're, some of the things that we're going to learn throughout this semester, some of the things that I'm going to teach you are really only foundational principles, but when you get to higher levels of economics, oftentimes we relax or eliminate those foundational concepts and augment them into something much, uh, much more detailed or much larger or much grander. Okay, so I'm warning you in advance, this is a principles class. You are learning the basics of economics, okay? All right, so one of the basic assumptions, two, well, two, I'm going to give you two basic assumptions in economics. The first one is called the ceteris, that's C-E-T-E-R-I-S, paribus, that's P-A-R-I-B-U-S, that's the ceteris paribus assumption. I'm going to put quote marks around it. What does ceteris paribus mean? Ceteris paribus basically means to um, examine one variable by not changing any of the other variables. You are holding everything else constant so that you can isolate the effects of a single variable on some other phenomenon. Okay, so ceteris paribus says that we're isolating all other variables so that we can examine one variable that's changing. Because here's what's going to happen in this class is I'm going to say something uh, like, hey, you know, when things are cheaper, people buy more of it. And then you're going to say, well, not always. Sometimes when things are cheaper, people don't want them at all. And I'm going to say, you know what? You're right. Sometimes things are so cheap that people don't want them at all. But I'm using the ceteris paribus assumption. We're going to assume that it's the kind of product that everybody wants. 
And so now, if it's a product that everybody wants and the price goes down, people are going to buy more of it because they do want it. We're going to assume that it is something that people want. So for example, if the price of garbage goes down, people may say, no, I don't want any more garbage. I'm trying to get rid of my garbage. Well, yes, I agree with you. But if we're talking about something normal, like a cheeseburger or French fries or a car, then we can assume, ceteris paribus, that when the price goes down, that people will buy more of it. Okay, so that's our first assumption in economics, is the ceteris paribus assumption. The second assumption, what is the second assumption? Oh, the second assumption is rationality. Rationality. Okay, now this is a really, really, we got to be very flexible with this rationality assumption, but we're still going to uh, we're still going to use this rationality assumption in this uh, principles class. Here's what the rationality assumption says. The rationality assumption says that people in general are rational decision makers. Meaning, if you give them a choice of whether they can have twenty dollars or thirty dollars, that they will choose. $30 every single time. And you might say to yourself, oh, there must be some kind of catch. No, I'm telling you, there's no catch. Your choices are $20 or $30. Which one do you want? Everything else is the same. And then obviously the rational person is going to say, well, I'd rather have more money than less money, so I'm going to take $30. Yes, exactly. We're going to assume that you are a rational person, that I am a rational person, that I want more good stuff and I want less bad stuff in my life. That is rationality. Okay? So that's the second assumption. Uh, and because economics is scientific, we have, to have, we have to start somewhere. And where we're going to start is that we're only going to look at one variable at a time. And then also we're going to assume that people are making rational decisions, that they're not insane, that they are not um, out uh, to get worse things for themselves and less better things. No, that doesn't make any sense. We're going to assume that the people, that the individuals, the organizations and societies that we are dealing with are rational. Okay? All right, now let's move on to conclusions. Oftentimes what we do in economics is after we learn something new, or after we understand something, we then draw a conclusion, right? And here's how it goes. For example, um, let's say that um, uh, people are spending more of their money on one kind of cereal. People are spending more money on Lucky Charms than they are spending on Cheerios. And so we might draw a conclusion. Well, if people are buying more uh, Lucky Charms, uh, than Cheerios and Ceteris Paribus, they're both, they both have the same price, then people must like, here, I'm going to draw a conclusion now. Well, I'm now going to conclude that people prefer Lucky Charms over Cheerios. Now, that may not be true in reality, but in my example, uh, that is a conclusion. And oftentimes, when we draw conclusions in economics, there are two kinds of conclusions that we can draw. We can draw or we can come to conclusions that are what we call positive conclusion conclusions or normative normative conclusions and what we're going to try and focus on in this class is we're going to primarily focus on positive conclusions not normative conclusions positive means let's see here what is, what is, and normative conclusions are what should be, what should be. We are going to avoid the what should be conclusions. Now, you're going to want to make some normative conclusions. As you go through this class, you're going to say, oh, because of that, uh, that means that's terrible, then, then this is what we should do. So, for example, you might say, oh, we might find out economically that there are people in this world who can't have health care. They can't get help when they're sick. And you may think to yourself, oh, my goodness. Now, now, the fact that we conclude that there are people who don't get medical help, that is a positive conclusion. That is just a, it's just a truth. 
We draw, nobody would argue. Nobody, generally speaking, people do not argue over positive conclusions. And so what I'm going to put over here is, uh, I'm going to say here, no arguments. No arguments over positive economics. Sometimes we call it positive economics and normative economics. So put, I'm going to put positive econ, and here's going to be normative econ. Okay, so in positive economics, generally, people do not argue over the truth. Everybody agrees that 17% of the people get no health care at all. Yes. What do your numbers say? 17%. What do your numbers say? 17%. We all agree there's no argument, but here's where it becomes, here's where it becomes argumentative. Okay, people disagree over what that means we should do. People disagree because of their values, because of their value judgments, okay? So, values, because of their values, people disagree on normative economics about what should be done. And what some people are going to say is, wow, well, those 17% of people, they should be able to get medical care, and therefore what we should do is take some money from somewhere and give those people medical care. And some other person, because they have different values, they're gonna say, no, that's not what it means at all. That would be very expensive. We can't take money away from those other things to give health care to these people. They're just gonna to have to deal with not having health care. And this is where people argue, is in the normative economics. We will do a little bit of normative economics, and you will hear me make statements that are related to normative economics. And I may say some things that you will disagree with. And when you disagree with me, chances are you have different values than I have. And that's okay. You can have different values than me. You should have different values than me. You can have very similar values, but generally speaking, every human being has a different set of values. And so we're going to disagree sometimes on what should be done. But positive economics is what is, generally speaking, there are no arguments over that. And here's what I'm telling you. As far as positive economics, one of the things that we're going to learn in positive economics is the fact that when the price of something goes down, people do buy more of it. And we're going to get to that in a, in a much later lesson. Okay, but that's an example of positive economics. All right, so economics is scientific.